1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 through verse 10. Today I want to talk about after this suffering. Everybody say that with me. After, after this, this suffering. suffering. The scripture read in, in, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion right. seeking yeah. whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while. Amen? Amen? After you have suffered a while, what is God going to do? Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Somebody say, after this, suffering. Now, suffering, what I'm going to talk about today and after this suffering, I, and I, I believe most of us feel like we shouldn't go through it. But let me tell you, suffering is in our DNA. Amen. Amen. It's part of us. It's something from every man, from the first man created till the end, even Jesus suffered. We all going to experience suffering. Sure, you're right. Now, our attitude ought to be why how, when, where, and we ought to get those questions answered. How do I deal with this suffering? Why am I suffering? Are y'all following me? When should I suffer? What should I allow myself to suffer with? Are y'all following? Where should I be suffering? Are y'all following? You need to answer all those questions. So suffering is part of our DNA. Suffering uh, teaches us. Suffering brings us to obedience. The Bible says Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. But if you don't understand suffering, if you don't define it when, when it happens, when you're going through it, the Bible just said you're going to suffer. And after you have suffered a while. So, so we got we to gotta figure out how long is a while. How do I shorten it? How do I uh, 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 get rid of it? What do I deal with? How do I deal with this thing called suffering? Mm -hmm. I think we try to protect our children from it. Most of you try to put Band-Aids on your children's lives, not just on their knees when they fall, but every time they have a bad grade or something bad happens to them in life, we're constantly trying to put a Band-Aid on it or act like it ought not be. And so children grow up not really able to deal with life circumstances. Right. Amen. We're too busy cussing the teacher out instead of reprimanding the child or helping them to do better. Because we don't want them to experience any suffering. We, 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 we blame the toy manufacturer when our child gets hurt by the toy instead of teaching them how to use the toy. Everybody understand that? We, we, we sue the bike company because they fell off the bike and, and, and broke a limb instead of teaching them how to ride a bike. So we're always and we're constantly trying to eliminate this word from our life. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you today, the Bible is already declared after you have suffered a while. So you have to come to the conclusion, I'm going to suffer. Mm -hmm. But I need to know why. I need to know how. I need to know when. I need to know where. Yeah. That's right. Now I come to let you know there's only two reasons for suffering. Suffering is a result of, number one, your faith being tested. We're going to look at that today. Or you're reaping what you sow. Mm -hmm. What are the two reasons for suffering? Faith. Faith. And so that's what we need to look at. Your faith being tested or you're reaping what you have So, So we got to equate that. Other, I'm going to suffer after I've suffered a while. Why am I suffering? Am I suffering as a result of being a busybody? We dealt with that Wednesday. A murderer, a thief. In other words, how do I suffer as a murderer, a thief? I'm going to jail. And if I commit a high enough crime, then there's usually, what, a death penalty That's right. for those states or places that still, and it's not unscriptural. That's right. That's right. That's right. Most of our modern law is, 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 is uh, taken from uh, Mosianic law. Mm -hmm. and, and Moses says, stone them. Sometimes they cut the hand off. <laughs> Certain things you just didn't do. That's right. That's right. Hello? So, so some suffering is a result of what we have done. Amen. But we can look at the Bible and see some things as a result of having an adversary. So the Bible points out you got to be under self-control, sober. Mm -hmm. 
You got to have the mind of temperance. Are y'all following me? You have to be able to be balanced enough that you don't lose it when you're being tested. You got to know, even if you're reaping what you sow, you're still going to have to exhibit some sense of patience. Yeah. That's right. Amen. 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 So, so suffering been introduced for us from the Garden of Eden, uh, even when Adam was in the Garden of Eden, was first man created. Uh, uh, we know they were going well, fair and well. Everything was had a good marriage, a good family. Uh, life was well. And who shows up? The adversary. Mm -hmm. And the adversary shows up, he steps over authority, and he goes to the woman instead of the man. Mm -hmm. And I think we still suffer with that same complex, mm -hmm. that same problem. Oh, yeah. Women, as Paul addressed, are still usurping authority over their husbands. That's right. It's all right to be quiet. I believe I'm preaching when y'all quiet, you listening. Amen. Women are still usurping authority over their husbands and allowing the enemy to, to give you ideas. Now, this is old teaching, old-fashioned teaching as far as the world is concerned, but I'm telling you, you're going to suffer as a result of it if you don't change it. Families suffer. Children suffer. Divorces happen. I don't have statistics to give you. I'm not one for really looking up a whole lot of statistics, but you can probably check them yourself. But uh, I believe, the last I checked, the highest divorce rate was in the church. That's right. So that means in the church, some of you don't have the, 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 the ability, you have it, but not using the exemplifying the ability to stand your ground. Right. Right. And, and not only stand your ground, you're constantly blaming the other person, and you don't realize you're not fighting against flesh and blood. Right. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness. Yes. So the disruption of the home uh, is not flesh and blood fight. Right. It happened in the Garden of Eden. What is Adam's first accusation of his wife? He accused God, that woman you gave me. So in other words, it shows men, all, men always looking for a cop out. Men always looking for an excuse. Because even though that woman he gave him, gave him the fruit that he knew he should not have eaten, he could have chose not to eat it and we would be fine. So in other words, his suffering is a result of his own actions. We can never blame someone else. We know we have an adversary. Two reasons. My faith is being tested, even if it was a test. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'd like to give y'all emergency broadcast today. It's only a test. <laughs> even though it's a test, it's what you do when it's time to take the test. How sober-minded are you? How, how much are you under control? How uh, uh, temperate are you? Yes. Amen. 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 How aware, how alert are you of your adversary? Do you know what's attacking you? Why it's attacking you? Amen? Amen. So let's look at some things. I want to define, I gave you the definition of suffering. I want to review those things very quickly about suffering so you'll understand it. Suffering is, first of all, to experience and to feel what is painful, disagreeable, and distressing, either to our body or to our mind. We've given you that in the scriptural example. If you didn't, weren't here Wednesday and you didn't get these, it says in Matthew 16, 21, quickly I'll review these things and so I can move on. Matthew 16, 21, at, from that time, it said Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, Suffer many things. What did he just do? Suffer many things from the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed and what? And be raised again. So how many know Jesus was already aware? I'm going to what? Suffer a while. I'm going to feel what is painful, disagreeable, distressing to the body or mind. And you know it was to the body because he emphasized it's not going to just be suffering somebody talking about me. I'm going to be killed. But how many get the last part? The victory is, yes. I'm going to raise again. Yes. How many believe I will be raised again? There's going to be glory after this. Amen. So to experience what is painful, that's, that's one definition of, of suffering. Suffering also is to endure, support, sustain, uh, not to sink under pressure, to undergo things, to be affected by something. Yes. Examples we gave you is in Acts 5.41. And in Acts 7, 24, I say those in advance so they can put them up and you'll have them or you can jot them down and look at them. I'll read them to you real quick. So it says the apostles, after they were preaching Jesus, how many know every time you declare Christ and you run around shouting about Jesus, everybody's not going to shout with you? Right. How many know just because you're on your job saying the Lord going to make a way somehow, everybody don't believe the same thing? That's right. 
So the, the, the apostles uh, were preaching Jesus. They, here's Acts chapter 5, after the Holy Ghost poured out in Acts chapter 2. Now they're Holy Ghost filled, they're empowered, and, and they're being a witness, but everybody's not receiving them. So now they brought before the council. Gamaliel speaks up on their behalf and said, now y'all wait a minute. If these men be of God, you can't fight against God. If they're not of God, leave it alone. It'll come to naught. But what, what the council did, they decided, let's beat them. So we know one thing. We're going to get them to stop preaching this Jesus if we just beat them. How many know you're going to suffer? Yes, sir. So what happened? They had to endure. They says this after they were beaten. Verse 41. So they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to what? Suffer shame. Amen. They were able to endure. They, were, they, they felt the support of God. They were able to sustain. They didn't shrink on the pressure. And if you go back and read the rest of it, they went to their company after that and they had a prayer meeting. Oh, no. They prayed and the Holy Ghost was poured out on them with boldness. Yeah. Amen. 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 You got to be willing to endure. You're going to go through some embarrassing things. Amen. Amen. Suffering also is exemplified in, 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 in Acts 7, 24. Stephen talks about uh, Moses when he was in Egypt. He's still preaching about Moses. Mm -hmm. How many know Jesus' life was spoken on for Moses and throughout all the prophets? He spoke about Jesus. Look here. Uh, uh, he says, Stephen says, and seeing one of them suffer wrong. He's talking about Moses when he was preaching to the people. He saw one of his brethren suffer wrong. He did what? Defended. And what else? Avenged him who, who was what? So what? He, he supported him. What did he do? Supported him. He tried to sustain him. He tried to help him. So when you suffer, how many know even though you're going through, God will give you a support system? A lot of times, the people we have there to support us, we don't receive them. Amen. Some of us are too busy feeling sorry for ourselves. We don't allow the support to help us. Same thing here. Moses thought he was going a good deed. Let me tell you something about Moses. I shared this already. He already knew he was going to deliver Israel when he was in Egypt. Mm -hmm. It took 40 years in the wilderness. He ran off into 40 years, another generation, mm -hmm. before he came back. Why? Because the people didn't receive the help that was right there in front of us. Amen. How many know you can get out of your issues quicker? Amen. 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 If sometimes we just allow those that God has put in our lives to speak into our lives. Amen. And then we got to also look at the flip side. And on the other flip side of this, it's about timing. Yeah. You're going to suffer a while. You're right. So Moses had to go away for 40 years and come back. But it says here in this scripture, he obviously knew he was a deliverer because he said he defended and avenged them who was oppressed. He struck down the Egyptians, Stephen says, for he supposed that his brethren would understand that God would what? Deliver, by, deliver them by what? His hand. But they did not understand. So he left for 40 years and came back. He tried to support he was there to help them endure what they was going through. He was there to give them a word that you're going to come out of this. How many believe you're going to come out of this? Yeah. Today, I'm here to give you a word. You're going to come out. Some of you not hearing me today because, see, right now you're not going through enough. It's not difficult enough. You feel, I can handle this little bit of pressure. And so you don't, you don't receive a lot of time the support that God has given you. We don't hear our wives when it's necessary. We could have prevented some of the disasters. Amen, men. Amen. Sure, you're right. Wives don't hear their husbands when it's necessary. They could have prevented some of the disasters. Right. It's on both sides. Children definitely don't listen to their parents. <laughs> could have prevented some of the disasters. Right. Now you got to do rehab. <laughs> now they got to pay for it. Now you bring home four or five grandchildren. Right. right. Hello? Or oh, you got children from three different fathers. And your mama tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. And then as soon as we have them, we want to drop them off at grandmama's house now. Then we mad with our grandmama, grab mad with mama because she won't raise my children. And you ain't trying to help me. So some of y'all sitting up in church mad with your parents because you brought on stuff on yourself. Break it down, break it down, Holy Ghost. But after you suffered a while. All right. Hallelujah. After he's perfected you, strengthened you, settled you, and established you. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That's what this thing is teaching you something. Somebody say, I'm learning something. Amen. How many learning something today? Amen. All right, suffering also means to allow, to permit, to forbid, or to hinder, to undergo, to be affected by. 
So in other words, let's look at Exodus 12, 23. Then Matthew 3, 14. This is quick review. It says in Exodus 12, 23, when the people was in, in, in Egypt, when they were being delivered, God instructed them to take a sacrifice lamb, kill the lamb, and put the blood on their doorposts. That night, the Egyptian was going to suffer some things, an angel of death, or whatever was coming through the land, and it wasn't going to touch their house because they were covered in the blood. How many grateful today you covered in the blood? Amen. Amen. So in Exodus 12, 23, the Lord will pass through, Moses says, to strike the Egyptian. He'll pass through to do what? And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on what? The two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow who? Not allow who? The destroyer to come in to your house to do what? Now let me help you with your reading. I don't know if y'all got this. Let me help you with your reading. You just read something. I need you to understand Old Testament uh, uh, terminology. It starts off saying the Lord will. Am I not right? The Lord will pass through and do what? The Lord will pass through and do what? So when you read that, it looks like the Lord is the striker. But Peter tells us we have an adversary. The devil who comes to what? Destroy. He comes to devour, to consume, to eliminate you. To uh, obliterate, just get rid of you. Amen. Sure you're right. So you read in the Old Testament, it said the Lord coming into Egypt and he's going to destroy the enemy. He's going to destroy the Egyptians. So you think it's the Lord, but you got to keep reading. God is there. The Lord is there to protect you from the destroyer. Thank you, Lord. To give you hope in the time of suffering. To let you know you're going to go through some things. You're going to experience something. But it's going to be an after this. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So you keep reading. The Lord going to strike the Egyptian. And when he sees the blood and lint on, on, on the doorpost. The Lord will pass over the door. And not allow. See, because part of suffering is not God doing it to you. It's what God allows to happen. Oh, somebody ought to shout off that revelation. I said, you got to understand this when you suffer. It's not what God doing to you. It's what God allows to happen. And so when you, you, you're in the perfect will of God, even though you're living right, you're still going to go through something. He allows things to happen because he always has victory on the other side. Some of us feel like I've been living right, I'm doing right, I, I pray, I go to church, I pay my tithe, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I, I shouldn't be going through it. But sometimes trouble is coming through the city you live in. Recession is going to affect everybody. Problems around you affect everybody. But what God said, you may go through some of it, you may see it, I may allow this or that, but I ain't going to allow you in the midst of it to be wiped out. I won't allow you to be destroyed. So you got to keep the faith. You got to resist the destroyer with your faith. Did anybody get that? Because I hear a lot of young people say the Bible contradicts itself. If God's a good God, why would God do this? And why would God? And you got to realize God's not doing anything to you. He can, but he allows us to go through. He allows the enemy to do his job. And he gets the glory. I say he gets the glory by bringing you out. Did y'all just catch that? The Lord going to pass through. The Lord going to strike these ships, Egyptians. The Lord's going to pass your door, Paul. And the Lord will not allow. Because the Lord is always in. Listen to me. He's in whatever you in. He's there when you're going through. He feels he knows your pain. But how many glad that he covers you with the blood. And he said, don't quit here. Don't give up here. Don't stop here. You might be going through some things, but you ain't destroyed. Thank you. Thank you for your grace. So in other words, suffering is allowed to permit. And God permits things, but he's not the destroyer. How many believe he's a good God? Somebody say he's a good God. Yes, he is. So sometimes he's allowed you to go through things. You're in Egypt. But how many believe he's going to bring you out? Yes, sir. And some of y'all like, why I'm waiting so long? He, Moses sent them a word. He tried to defend them 40 years before he delivered them. Yeah. Amen. Yes. 
He thought they would understand. He was like, hint, hint, y'all know God going to use me. Uh -huh. Hint, hint, you know, I, I, I'm the deliverer. Hint, hint, I heard y'all praying. God heard y'all praying. And, and, and I was brought to Egypt for such a time as this. So he rises up and defend one of his brothers. And, and instead of them receiving him and understanding him, they mocked him. That's just like some of us today. We don't appreciate what's in front of us until it's too late. Or we don't hear who's in front of us until later down the road. That's right. Sometimes take other people to come in here and tell us the same thing we've been hearing. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Anybody getting this? Yes, All right, quickly, I got to move on. And John tried to, uh, uh, verse uh, 14 in, in Matthew uh, 3, 14, 15. John tried to prevent Jesus from being baptized, prevent him. Because John felt like he needed to be baptized with Jesus. So, so in other words, he, Jesus saying, permit this, suffer this to be. John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized with you, and you're coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, permit it to what? Or oh, suffer it to be. The King James says, suffer this to happen. Mm -hmm. Permit it to be so now, for thus is fitting for us to fulfill what? All righteousness. Suffering also means to be damaged or suffer loss. To be damaged or suffer loss. In, in Matthew 5, 25 and 26. Matthew 5, 26. Notice what it says. You don't have to turn there. You can write it down for your uh, future notes. It said, now a certain woman who had a flow, who had a blood, flow of blood for what? 12 years. She had a what? Flow of blood for 12 years. And the Bible says, and had suffered many things from what? Many physicians. She has spent all that she had and was no better, but grew worse. So she suffered damage and loss. Not only was the sickness destroying her, but it was eating up her finances. That's right. But how many know you don't stop there and get depressed? Oh, yeah. The Bible said when she heard of Jesus. Amen. How many heard of Jesus? How many know Jesus is able to help you? When she heard of Jesus, amen? She said, if I but touch to him, of his garment. Amen. So I want to deal with today. I want to deal with two things. Two reasons. Everybody say two reasons. reasons. We're going to suffer. Everybody say number one. Number one. My faith is being tested. Faith is being or number two. Number two. I'm reaping what I've sown. Reaping. Let me see if I can prove that to you through the scripture. I'm going to give them these scriptures. You're going to go to them with me. First Peter 4. We're going to go to First Peter 4 uh, chapter 4 verse 12 through 14. I want to go over to James chapter uh, 1. I'm sorry, yeah, chapter 1, verse 2 and 4. They'll write them down. Genesis 22, 1 through 6, and Deuteronomy 8, verses 2 through 3. If y'all can go there with me today, we're going to find out we're being tested. It's a test. Somebody says it's only a test. Only a test. In 1 Peter 4, 1 Peter 4, we there? As soon as they have it up, I'm going to turn right over there. 1 Peter chapter 4. What verse did I tell you? 12. All right, notice in verse 12, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Everybody ready? Let's read. Beloved, do not think it strange. Don't think it strange concerning the fiery trials. That's right. That's what suffering is. See, it's a test. Somebody says it's only a test. Come on, this is the emergency broadcasting system. We just giving you a sound this morning. It's only a test. Tell your neighbor, you better make sure it's only a test. Yeah, sure only a test. Say, make sure you're not reaping what you've sown. Sure you're Say, we'll cover that too. Yeah. Beloved, do not think it's strange concerning what? Fire fire. Concerning what? Fire what are they here to do? Which is to try. Why do we have trials? We have fiery trials to try us. Yeah. Somebody shout, it's hot. Ah. And I'm burning up. <laughs> Those are the fiery trials. How many know sometimes it gets so hot you just feel like you can't take it? Amen. I can't handle this. And it's warning you, it's only a test. Don't act like this is a strange thing. The trials come to try you. And some of you ask God, why am I going through this? It's a test. But you have to ask the question why, because you don't know if it's a result of what I've done. Right. Remember Job, remember? 
uh, and the conversation that Satan had with God before, to and fro on the earth, looking to whom he may devour. And, and, and then when Job was going through, he had questions. Mm -hmm. That's right. But his, 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 his answer was, even though God slay me. He didn't know why he was going through. He kept saying, and Job's only problem, the Bible says he kept the faith. But the young preacher came along and gave him revelation. Your problem was self-righteousness. Sometimes we go through, we act like I've done so right, I've been so good, I shouldn't be. And the Bible said, don't think this is strange. What you are being tested with came to test you. You don't go to school and just get a degree without a test. Most jobs you can't even get without being tested. Right. You can't work for the government unless they... Amen. You can't play sports unless they... Amen. Amen. That's why they call it a tryout. It's a test, but it's where we lose the battle is in the midst of the test. That's what I'm telling you how it relates to school and why your children going through elementary school. School, and, and the law of the Bible says is just our schoolmaster. Mm -hmm. Remember that in Galatians? Mm -hmm. That's right. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Amen. So otherwise, there's some necessary things how to keep order, how to follow guidelines. How to, that's why God gave the law in the Old Testament. The law was a teacher. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. The law was our discipline. So when your children even going through school, it's not they just learning their ABCs and trying to be the smartest in the class. It's teaching them about life. Amen. That's why they got to be in the right school that they're not teaching them the wrong life lessons. Right. And if the school is telling you that men ought to be married men and women ought to be married women, that's the long, wrong lesson. And you will suffer. Right. And the destroyer will destroy you yes. because you're on the wrong side. Yes. Amen. Right. We don't want our children to go through the schoolmaster. Mm -hmm. We don't want to go through the schoolmaster. Right. You know how you honor the, the Ten Commandments? We need, Ten Commandments are thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Jesus came along and said, you don't need all that if you love God with all your heart, body, soul, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. That's right. mm -hmm. You're in the, word. the Old Testament was a schoolmaster. Yeah. But what we do, we stop teaching the children the, the commandment. So they don't have any basis, any foundation yeah. to love God. Are y'all following me? Amen. So that's why in the public entity, in the public sector, they're trying to get rid of everything that resembles God. Amen. But when somebody come in and shoot up a school and all the kids, they ask why God allowed this to happen. Amen. We blame God for the bad stuff. But we just read it in the Egyptian, uh, 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 in, in, in Exodus, in the Egyptian. He said, the Lord going to come through, destroy the Egyptian, but he will not allow the destroyer. Hallelujah. So that means God is allowing the destroyer the whole time to even destroy the Egyptian, but he gives a shield about his own. He gives angels charge over us. But it doesn't exempt you from the trials. Look at your neighbor and say, it's hot. And I'm burning up. <laughs> Glory to God. Below, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you. Why they come? To try you. As though some strange thing has happened to you. But what should we do in the midst of it? We should get the sleep out of our eyes and wake up. Some of y'all are... Some of you are going to go through whatever because you just, you're not, you sleep. <laughs> what do you do in the midst of the trial? Yeah. What do you do in the midst of the trial? Yeah. That means nobody should be begging you to praise God. Yeah. All right. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. How many know what you're going through ought to turn the praise up in this house? Yeah. How many know the volume in this house for praise ought to be high? Yeah. How many know there ought to be a joyful noise? Yeah. See, y'all gonna do two things. You're gonna do two things. You're gonna turn that volume up of praise or you're gonna turn that volume up of fiery trials. That's right. Because fiery trials, it ain't a strange thing. It's an equalizer. All right. Are it's gonna make you come up in here and lift up your hands and say, no matter what I'm going through, the God I serve 
is able to deliver me. The God I serve is worthy of my praise. The God I serve. I'll keep praising him. I won't be defeated and I won't quit. Somebody say, turn the volume up. Join Pastor Frederick and Vanessa Anderson as they move Covenant Christian Ministries forward. Stay up to date with the latest news and events by visiting our website, ccmmarietta.org. Now you can tune in to Pastor Anderson anytime, anywhere from your smartphone. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you're notified when the latest video is posted. YouTube.com forward slash user forward slash CCM Marietta. Like us on our Facebook page and you'll receive daily postings expounding on the Word of God from Frederick Anderson. Check out our Facebook page at Facebook.com forward slash Covenant Christian Ministries. Now it's easier than ever to share teachings from Pastor Frederick Anderson. Just copy and paste the link to your Facebook page. Be a part of ministry that matters. Share, subscribe, support. It's that easy. You too can help Pastor Frederick and Vanessa Anderson reach thousands of people as we move Covenant Christian Ministries forward.